Hellish Cart is a pretty apt name, considering that Hellish means that something sucks, and Cart is a fencing stance, so that pretty much sums up me playing this game. I have some experience fencing, and so I thought I might have an advantage from the start, but it turns out that a little bit of experience is some ways short of what's needed to consistently succeed. I have a friend. Oh, friend. Oh, friend. Yes, I have a friend, and he's an actual sword fighter who teaches other people how to sword fight. After about 10 minutes of getting to grips with the controls, it transpired that he's a lot better at the game than I am. The reason is because Hellish Cart isn't so much a fighting game or a beat-em-up game in the traditional sense as it is a sword fighting simulator. What you're learning to do is how to match the inputs of real world motions and gestures so that you can use real swings and thrusts in an attempt to land a blow. Physics and body mechanics are free flowing and the ultimate goal is to hit vital points as you would in a real duel, rather than simply drain a virtual health bar using pre-designed attacks. Wounds slow you down and your offhand is utilized to grapple or sabotage your enemy's maneuverability as it would in real life. The longsword is perhaps a little out of place for the time period, and the different styles of rapier fighting that might be seen in the real world appear to have been streamlined, but ultimately the experience is a respectful departure from those that prioritize accessibility of fighting games over raw technical challenge. Hellish Kart is pretty much the antithesis of the arcade fighting game. Blocking is automated and can be encouraged by moving away, and double tap back to dash away a little bit faster. All four gamepad buttons perform an attack, and each of those can be combined with a direction to perform yet another, with each character having wildly different moveset that's largely dictated by their weapon type. There are combos which come into play if you can get into a rally of blows, allowing you to repost at a specific angle to overcome the enemy's blade position, and relying on these movesets in the heat of battle is when it comes closest to the high-speed chess feel of a traditional fighting game. The left trigger allows you to extend your blade out and force a little bit of distance, although that usually got me killed. I just think I need to watch a few more YouTube videos on sword fighting to get my head around how that one works. Alternatively, the right trigger is used at very close range to physically grasp the enemy's sword hand, a maneuver which I'm told is very realistic and a welcome addition to the game. And finally, the shoulder buttons can be used to perform what is akin to an execution, if indeed your opponent ever lets you get that close, which is pretty rare considering the blades seem to have the danger level of a lightsaber. The realism of the game is most apparent when you and your opponent strike one another down simultaneously. Although after every round your wounds are reset, you can't help but wonder how anybody doesn't die of an infection in this game, as it seems you can't get very far without incurring a pretty serious wound. Well, there's something pretty badass about fist pump in the air having just won a round with a massive gouge that runs from your eyebrow down to your chin. Can't exactly imagine you had the highest of life expectancies as a sword fighter in the 17th century. Some games are easy to learn and hard to master, or vice versa. Hellish Kart is neither. It's hard to learn and it's probably a lot harder to master, and the reason is because mastering it isn't so much a matter of learning which moves overall which are within the mechanics of the game, but rather it's a matter of understanding the base mechanics of the game and then applying real-world sword fighting to that model. Despite the purest approach to the fighting mechanics, the rest of the game doesn't appear to take itself too seriously, with quirky looking characters, upbeat and authentic sounding backing tracks, and a variety of game modes in the works. Being a Polish game, a number of the nationalities of the characters are mainly focused in or around that east side of Europe, which is pretty refreshing considering how much Western screen time has been dedicated to the French and English styles of sword fighting when considering the era, with Polish, Hungarian, Prussian, Cossack and Lithuanian characters to name just a few. And the environments are surprisingly immersive, with some showing some pretty harrowing surroundings and others being peaceful and serene. And I'm particularly glad they didn't drop the ball on this one, because it's actually a bit of an unspoken rule that no great duel to the death should ever occur in a place without an epic background. It's actually quite hard to pick a favourite, although carving trails through a snowy forecourt in front of the inn is a particularly nice touch. At the end of the day, in the real world, if nobody has armour and everybody's of equal skill, it stands to reason that the person with the longest sword would win, and in my brief array into the game, that is precisely the conclusion I drew. Long live the rapier! Thanks so much for listening, and remember, like and subscribe can be pretty life-changing for me, so if you find it in yourself to click that button, I would be so, so grateful. Take care of yourself, and see you next time.